We now welcome in the NFL's executive vice president of football operations, a 15-year NFL veteran, by the way, a legend, the one and only Troy Vincent. What's going on, man? Long time no see. How have you been? Yeah, it's been good holding on. We got through regular season, got through the divisional rounds, and we're making our steps towards Super Bowl 56, which I think all, each of us are looking forward to in L.A. I, I got to tell you, man, this past weekend, I think it was the greatest weekend of football I've ever seen. And I think that that fourth quarter between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs in the nightcap Sunday night may have been the best fourth quarter I've ever seen. I'll get into all of that in a minute, though, because I brought you on here today for a different reason. We are now in the year 2022, and we've seen guys like Mike Tomlin do a lot of good things. Uh, yet, even though the Rooney Rule was instituted in 2003, which would help buffer and give opportunities to African-American men as head coaches in the league, we stand here today with 32 NFL teams and only one African-American coach. You have spoken out about that publicly before. I'd like you to do it again. How concerned are you about that? Well, I'm optimistic, yet concerned until, as we would say, until the game's over and you look at the scoreboard, it's a win or a loss. Um, there's no ties in this game. Mm. There's no overtimes in, in this particular fight. And, Stephen, when you, when you think about 2003, when the Rooney Rule was instituted, it was necessary for that time. Mm. We're one month into 2022, and we're still talking about legislating, interviewing people of color. Mm. There was a time and place for that and needed to build depth, as we would say on the depth chart. We are now in the 20, 2022, and we are still relying on a legislation policy to interview women and people of color uh, for these positions. And it's just uh, the efforts from Chairman Rooney, Commissioner uh, Deja Smith and Jonathan Bean, who's our Chief Diversity Officer, mm -hmm. the efforts that have been made to develop, identify people, develop the pipeline. It's, uh, we're now looking for clubs to give men a second opportunity in some cases. Mm -hmm. In other cases, grant the same grace, Stephen, that we've seen happen to their counterparts. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's, that's where we well, are. And we're, we're at a crossroad. And uh, all of these things tie back to when we talk about social justice. I have to bring that in because... There is no social justice without racial justice. Mm. And what we have seen, potentially, it, it suggests that there's a, potentially a racial undertone. Well, I want to go there because here's what I've said. First of all, I want to applaud the National Football League office because I don't, I don't point the finger at Roger Goodell and the league office at all because I think the efforts have been made, but ultimately owners are going to hire who they want to. Team owners are going to hire who they want to. It's on them. And what really, really alarms me, and I said this when I brought up social justice issues, when George Floyd got murdered, I said the knee on his neck was meta metaphorically speaking, black folks have felt like there's been a knee on their neck for quite a long time. And this is the latest example. It wasn't just about a, a guy being killed by a police officer. It's about a fact that you constantly feel like you got to scratch and claw just to get some semblance of an even playing field. That doesn't seem to be the case as it pertains to African-American coaches with the number one sports league in America. What do these owners say? in defense of themselves when it comes to these numbers that are very glaring? Well, it's concerning. Uh, they, they mentioned that it's concerning, and this is just where it's our issue. What we saw this past week was outstanding. We saw the best coaches in the world, the best players in the world, get it on Saturday and Sunday. But we also saw what it can be. We saw sidelines of men of color, of Asian women, we saw the sidelines represented by the best. Now, if we're okay, meaning men of color are okay, because you can't win today without men of color, but we need people to see and ownership to see that these men could lead. They're creative. They're, they make adjustments. They're great game managers. We saw that on full display. What we're asking for is no handouts. What we're asking for is just extend that same grace. Here's a great example. 
extend the same grace that we have seen with Brad Childress, love coach Chili, Pat Shermer, love coach Coach Shermer, Doug Peterson was my teammate, and Matt Nagy. That same grace be extended to them for an opportunity to lead a team. We want to see that same grace extended toward Eric Bieniemy, that is coached under Andy Reid. For the first time in 101 years, we had a general manager and Martin Mayhew get a second opportunity. Yeah. 101 years. We're just looking for, we want to eliminate bias, Stephen. It's simple. Eliminate bias, promote trust develop skills, and provide opportunities for all. Got to get That out. extends to the men of color. Got to get out of here real quick. Just a couple of more questions. Real quick answer here. Do players in the National Football League, particularly black players, need to speak up about this issue? Yes, we all do. And they have. And, and, and frankly, uh, Commissioner Goodell and Dee Maurice, uh, this is an area that it takes all of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Players have spoken out, will speak out, continue to. Players don't make a decision. Obviously, right. the owners have to make that decision. But, yes, we need everyone. Well, you know damn well I will. You ain't got to worry about that part. I definitely will speak out about it. I'll continue to speak out about it. I don't give a damn what it takes. Let me transition to the football field before I let you get on out of here. Um, I hated seeing Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines. I'm sorry, Josh Allen on the sidelines. Couldn't get the ball in overtime. I hated seeing Tom Brady. I'm sorry, Patrick Mahomes three years ago when Tom Brady was in Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines. I understand you got to pay attention and safety is, is paramount. I get all of that. And I understand the regular season. But in the playoffs, could the league modify the rule just a little bit to get to make sure both teams touch the ball at least once? Could that happen, Troy Vincent? Well, that's a, that's a club and ownership decision. As a former defender, mm -hmm. special teams yeah. and defense, yeah. you got to play ball. That's true. Don't let it go in the OT. Decide that game within them four quarters. Yeah. Okay. Now, you do get the ball back if you hold them to a field goal. Yeah. I got you. I knew you would say that, Troy. I knew you would say that. I mean, you know, I, I'm, a, Steven, I'm an offense kind of guy. I knew you were going to say that. You'd be in the defense, Steven, uh, def it was defense guy. 13 seconds. 13 seconds. Okay. I got you. By the way, the blaze is nice and the glasses I love. I know that was the wife. That wasn't you. That was the wife that did that. But I take it. I take it. Love you, bro. Appreciate you being on the show. Thanks so much. Thanks, Steven. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.